Gunfire and terror at YouTube headquarters in California. New information still is coming in, but we now know the shooter was a woman. Police say she's dead, and multiple people are wounded. The suspect's motive, still unclear. I'll talk about that story much more with Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal, and our correspondents and analysts are all standing by. Uh, let's get first to our national correspondent, Miguel Marquez, who's tracking the late-breaking developments for us on this YouTube shooting. What are you learning, Miguel? Well, it was in the lunch hour when the shots started and the 911 call started to go into the San Bruno police. It was a cafeteria area, an outdoor patio area where that shooting began. And within minutes, there was a massive police uh, presence on scene as well as emergency services. It, then it was a, a bit of chaos with very heavily armed police moving into the YouTube headquarters. Uh, over a thousand employees there. That thousand employees were trying to get out of the YouTube headquarters at the same time. Uh, within an hour or so, they had set up triage areas. The law enforcement uh, pace seemed to have lessened just a bit. Here is what the San Bruno police uh, chief, how has he described the timeline? At 12.46 p.m. this afternoon, San Bruno Police Department received numerous 911 calls regarding gunshots at the YouTube campus located on Cherry Avenue in our city. Uh, San Bruno Police arrived on scene at 12.48 and, uh, at, uh, and immediately began a search uh, for a possible shooter or suspect. Um, upon arrival, officers encountered numerous employees fleeing from the building. Uh, it was very chaotic, as you can imagine. Um, we did encounter one victim with an apparent gunshot wound uh, towards the front of the business as we arrived. Uh, several minutes later, while conducting a search of the premises, uh, officers located a second uh, individual with a gunshot wound that appears to uh, may have been self-inflicted. We are still working on confirming that. Um, two additional victims were uh, located um, several minutes later uh, at an adjacent business. Um, the, the extent of all of the injuries of our victims um, are, are unknown right now. They were all transported for emergency medical care, um, but they are all unknown. So if I miss that, we, um, we have four victims um, who have all been transported for, uh, for gunshot-related injuries, and we have one subject um, who's uh, deceased inside the uh, building uh, with a self-inflicted wound that at this time uh, we believe to be the shooter, but we're still following up on that. And we do have a little bit more information on those victims. One was a 32-year-old female. She's in serious condition. A 27-year-old female who is in fair condition and a 36-year-old male who is in critical condition. All of them have been transported to San Francisco General Hospital. We also know that uh, Stanford Hospital received several uh, individuals uh, from this scene as well, but it is not clear if they were victims of uh, gunshot uh, wounds or if they were just injured in that uh, mass evacuation from YouTube headquarters. Wolf? Pretty terrifying uh, incident when you hear gunshots like that at that campus. Uh, thanks very much. Miguel, I want to uh, quickly turn to our law enforcement analyst, Josh Campbell. He's a former FBI supervisory special agent. Josh, uh, how rare is it that this was a female workplace shooter? Hi, Wolf. It's very rare. If you look back over the last two decades, the FBI actually did a study from 2000 2013 at the number of shootings, the mass shootings, they call it in the United States. And of 160 that they identified, only six of them were perpetrated by a female attacker. So it's something that's extremely rare. Obviously, there are so many questions that we have right now as far as any possible re relationship between the shooter and her victims. Is, were, did they know each other? Two questions I have, and we'll learn this as we hear from witnesses and as, you know, the CCT within the building is is analyzed and you know possibly released is how did what was the TikTok here did the person go in was there conversation between the shooter and the victims or was did she just go and start shooting secondly a, a big question for me is did she take her life immediately after the shooting or did she take her life when confronted by law enforcement and that's something that's going to be key I don't think as you know as we've talked about over the last hours we've been watching this that it, it appears at least to be some type of terrorism um, it doesn't look that way because you don't see that mass loss of life is in a compound this big. Obviously, that's something that we look to. So many questions unanswered. We'll continue to uh, ping our law enforcement sources in order to gather information and report back to you. Yeah, it doesn't look like terrorism. The FBI uh, issued a statement saying San Bruno Police is the lead agency at this time, although they're helping. If it was terrorism, the FBI would be in charge. How long, Josh, will it take for police to clear this scene? 
it's going to be a massive effort. If you look at the size of the compound and obviously in hearing from the police chief there, he indicated that, you know, different victims were found in different places. So as they go through to methodically clear, just as a textbook uh, response, they're going to be looking for additional threats. But also in this case, they're going to be looking for additional victims. Are there other people out there that maybe they just don't know about yet? Again, probably highly unlikely, but it's got to be something that they really focus on going, you know, from from, you know, each side of the building throughout the building, floor to floor, in order to ensure that they are fully confident that there are no more threats and there are no more victims before they give the all clear. Does it sound like a workplace violence incident that just happened to be taking place over at YouTube headquarters? It certainly suggests that. I mean, if you look at these facilities, uh, these tech companies, which, you know, I was in the FBI, I would liaise with a lot of them. I mean, these are uh, buildings with large security presence. I mean, there, there is uh, controlled access as far as coming and going. You can't just walk in off the street and walk into a YouTube cafeteria. Um, so that suggests to me that this person at least had some uh, purpose for being there, which obviously would, would, you know, suggest that maybe she worked there. We don't know that yet, um, whether, you know, she was a, a guest or, you know, how long she had been there, but still a lot of, a lot of questions that are unanswered at least appears to be workplace shooting because it does take place in a, in a place of business and it wasn't it doesn't look like she was just you know going and, and shooting uh, just to kill you know victims indiscriminately uh, but again a lot of these questions will start, will get solidified once we actually hear from the witnesses and we see some of that security footage all right uh, josh i'm going to have you stand by uh, we're getting a statement in from google uh, the uh, parent company of youtube let me read it to our viewers uh, we continue to actively coordinate with local authorities and hospitals our security team has been working closely with authorities to evacuate the buildings and ensure the safety of employees in the area. Uh, that statement just coming in from Google. Uh, the uh, President Trump, we are now told, has been briefed on the YouTube shooting. He tweeted about it just a little while ago. I want to go to our chief White House correspondent, Jim Acosta. Jim, uh, what's the reaction from the White House? Yeah, that's right, Wolf. Uh, the president did issue a tweet uh, just in the last several minutes saying he has been briefed on the situation out in California. Uh, we can put that up on screen. The president, uh, in addition to that, offering his uh, thoughts and prayers to everybody involved and thanking uh, law enforcement and first responders uh, that are on the scene. But, Wolf, in terms of uh, this administration's uh, participation in all of this, it sounds like at this point they're leaving it to local authorities out there in California.